All right, good evening. The, the leg of the, good the evening. Good evening. Hi, Neil. Hi, Neil. Uh, hi, Mom. Mom was here last week. Uh, before we get started, I'll get Mom. Uh, Mom was here last week in Florida. We had a great time. She went back uh, yesterday. Um, uh, and she'll be back in March. That's right. Thanks, Mom. Um, I am. Uh, I have a little bit of uh, vertigo, so uh, I struggle with it from time to time, especially when the, the, well, the, the barometrics change a lot. Um, so I'm a little dizzy. Um, if I close my eyes and talk, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm um, just trying to keep the world from spinning. All right. Um, Cakes are available if you want to buy a whole cake. We have three cakes available. Uh, so if you enjoyed that, you want to take one home. Negotiate a price. Happy. Okay, uh, this is Tuesday, according to Mark. Okay? What happened here on Tuesday is what happened according to Mark uh, during the Passion Week, the last week that uh, Jesus was alive here on earth. We are going to look at one specific, one specific instance today. That's the only thing we'll cover. We'll talk, we'll talk more about what happened on the other days, or things that may have happened on Tuesday, uh, other weeks. But we're going to talk about what happened Tuesday. Uh, is everyone comfortable? Um, it's, a, it's a little chilly for people. Okay. So y'all don't weigh as much as I do, so I have some extra padding. Seventy-two, uh, how's that? That's freezing. Seventy-two is freezing? I had it on seventy. We're on the floor in Florida. Seventy-eight sounds Use the mic. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Like, hey, I you Use the mic. Plug it in. You know, that works. That helps. Okay, how's that? Great. All right, sorry about that. I have so many people here. Isn't that great? I have to use the microphone. Okay, um, here we go. Oh, fun, fun. We have to do gospel parallels again. Okay? <laughs> so, we are, one, again, we're going to focus on Mark because we believe that on Tuesday, this is what <coughs> according to Mark. All right? So, but um, let's begin with Matthew. Somebody read me Matthew 21, verses 12 through 17. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying, they asked him? Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise. And he left them and went out to the city of Bethlehem, where he spent the night. All right, so here we have what's going on in this in Matthew. What happened? All right, who's in it? Jesus. Jesus. Who else? 
The money changers. Money changers. Change your money. Children. Children. Cheap priests. Fine people. I misspelled that. I know I misspelled it. Don't say anything. Line and lane. Okay. Where are they? The temple. temple. Uh, when did this take place? The next day. Tuesday. Mm. Does it? Oh, my fault. I said we were going to do something to happen on Tuesday. It's actually Monday. Let's pretend it's Monday. What do we think? What day do we think it is? According to Matthew. The next day. The next day? Or the same day. Oh, because they approached Jerusalem. Yeah. Sunday? It might be the same day. It might be a Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. And I will put a question mark here. When, where, who, what, Give me a brief synopsis of what happened. Uh, let's just say Jesus is angry. Why is he angry? Selling goods in church. Selling goods in church. Remember that theme. Selling goods in church. Or in the temple. Alright, let's go to Mark 11, 15 through 19. On reaching Jerusalem, <clears throat> Jesus entered the temple area and began, and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, it is, is it not written? My house will be called the house of prayer for all nations. But you have made it a den for robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When the evening came, they went out of the city. Okay, who's involved? Jesus. Jesus? Jesus? Yep. Money changers. Once again, the money changers? Chief priests. Chief priests. CP is chief priests. Scribes. Scribes. Says his disciples are with him. Okay, and this time his disciples are with him. Alright? Where is it? Temple. Temple. I led you astray. I said you had to read verse 12. Does anyone know what happened last week in Mark um, on Sunday after Jesus rides the donkey in Mark? Jesus goes to the temple that night, sees that no one is there, and then he goes back to Bethany to stay. So we know in Mark, this happened when? Monday. This happens Monday. What happened here? He drove them out. Uh, he's angry again. Drives them out. <clears throat> but there's no healing of the blind and lame. No healing. Nor is there children. No healing. No children. Who said that? All right, that's right. There's now a plot to kill him. If 
you're writing this down, if you wrote plot to kill him, I want you to underline because last week, and Robin reminded me of it, I talk about something and I don't come back to it. So remind <laughs> me to say something about that. Okay, who's got, who has Luke 19, 45 through 48? When Jesus entered the temple courts. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I wasn't ready. And that's my fault. I'm really prepared. Oh, let's go back here. I want to go back here for just a second. Let's go back to Mark 11 real quick. Is that significant in this? That's what I was going to What would you say? Is Doug's significant? Exactly where I was going. Yeah. Okay. That's why I forgot. <laughs> what happens to the people selling doves? Bench. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. We'll, we'll go with it. The bench. I want you to remember that, okay? Now, and I'm sorry whoever had Luke, mm -hmm. I apologize. Um, Luke mm -hmm, 19. 19, 19, 40, uh, through 48. Luke 19, 40. When Jesus entered the temple courts, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, My house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it, because all the people hung on his words. All right, so who's involved? Jesus. Jesus. And he, who else? Jesus. I'm sorry? Chief priest. Chief priest. Chief priest. Teachers of the law. Teachers of the law. And leaders of people. Okay. Uh, where are we at? The temple. The temple. So now I'll write them over here. Ah, uh, when is it? One day. It's what? One day. One day. It could be Sunday or Monday. Now Jesus does before this. Jesus is over Jerusalem, and he saw the city, and he wept over it. Um, but we believe it's right after, if you notice the uh, beginning of 20 or verse 28 through 40, we believe it's the same day as when he comes in his triumphal entry into the city. So it's looking like it might be. Uh, what happens? He drove out the sellers. Drives out the sellers. There's no debenching the doves here. And drives out sellers. Hmm. Um, anything else? Ooh. Yes, what else? I think this is the first time they said every day he was teaching at the temple. And yeah, this found me uh, daily teaching at temple. Same things going on here. What's going on? Plot to kill him. Plot to kill him. <laughs> Remember what we said? Oh, I'll come back. Okay. Neil, 
Yes. Is it significant that they that he says in verse 46, it was written, he said to them, my house will be a house of prayer, but you've made it into a den of robbers. Yes, we'll talk about that. And just Go ahead. Well, I just wondered where was that scripture in the Old Testament? The Old Testament. Yeah. Um, uh, are, we in, are we in Luke? Yes. Yes. Um, what verse was that? 46. Uh, Jeremiah 46. 7, 11. That will be Isaiah 56, 7. Oh, really? Yes. Or oh, I have Jeremiah 7, 11. Yeah, that's yeah. what I have. I'm sorry. I'm not that smart. I just have a cheat sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just in case you want to know. Well, according to this, it's that verse is divided into two uh, places. Where the first yeah. part, my house will be a house of prayer, is Isaiah, but the rest of it yep. is it's Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Yep. I just That's what I have here, question. too. Um, okay, let's go to John. Yep. I got it. Okay, just one second. John 2. John 2, 13 through, John 2, 13 through 25. Ready? Yep. Oh, okay. Um, when it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was <coughs> his body. <coughs> After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Now while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover... Oh, oh, sorry. 20, um. <clears throat> oh, look. <laughs> 22. <laughs> 22. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, who's in this one? Jesus. His mother and brothers. His mother and brother. Mom and brothers. All right. We're still in Luke, are we still in Luke? We're in John. Disciples. Disciples. John 13. I mean, two. 13. Um, I'm totally misspelled. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Disciples. Okay. Disciples. And who else? Money changers. Money, money, money changers. 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 Who else? The Jews, it says. That's the Jewish leaders. Jewish leaders? Where is it? In the temple. In the temple. When is it? It's a trick almost question. Time the, almost time for the Passover. It's a trick question. Three years earlier. You've just done the miracle. Yes, yes, right. It was a Passover, you're right. It was a Passover, you're right. Um, three years earlier. Yes, it was three years earlier. This cleansing happens not 
according to either Sunday or Monday, that's not up for debate. This was three years prior. How do we know that? Because it was the beginning of his ministry. Jesus did go to three Passovers. This was the first one he attended. This was right after what? Changing the water into wine. His first miracle. Exactly. This is after his first miracle. We'll come back to this, okay? Um, what happens in this? Sunday sermon. I'm sorry, what? Oh. Right after Sunday's sermon. So it must have been a Monday. It was after Sunday's sermon. After, okay. We'll put it in parentheses Monday. This is after Sunday. But it was three years earlier. Um, what happens? There is one. You mean he got violent and turned over to. Had a whip. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. He had a whip. Or in some translations it says a scourge. A scourge. A scourge. A scourge is uh, uh, one synonym. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Cat of nine tails is where you're going, aren't you? Yeah, okay. Cat of nine tails. I can spell nine. <laughs> Who's in, who else is involved? Dan? The sellers of the cattle and the sheep and the doves. Yeah. The money. Cattle. And the money changers. Yeah. Money changers. MC for money changers. But if you notice, <coughs> he didn't address the people who were um, selling cattle or sheep. He just like took a whip and just said, "Get out!" You know, who did he address? I agree. Huh? No, the money changers. Well, that too. Well, yeah, that too. But especially, yeah, especially to these people as well, right? And we see it here in Mark. Okay, so we've got our four parallels. <clears throat> you want your five? I don't need them anymore. You're fine. My <laughs> notes are big enough. Seriously, anyway. <laughs> You don't like seeing me in these really colored shoes? I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> okay. So, what's the constant? And oh, let's go back. So, in three of the gospels, we have it happens pretty much on the same day, within 24 hours. Okay. But here, it's three years prior. Is it bad chronology in the Gospels? Or do you believe it happened twice? He cleanses the temple twice. Cleanses the te you believe that he cleanses the temple twice? Sure. This is... This doesn't mean just because it happens in different parts in chronology that it didn't happen twice. Especially when we see that the whip is not mentioned in any of these. The whip is only mentioned in John. And the whip or cat of nine tails or whatever, the nickname was the cat. Alright? And it's basically... Hmm, about the size of a small baseball bat, but at the end, if you've ever seen one, it actually has these hard strands, usually made of cotton, and there's nine on them, cat of nine tails. And so hitting that would pierce the skin of anyone who got hit with it. Now it doesn't say that Jesus hurt anyone, it just said that he used it to drive people out because he was angry. We have to understand justified and biblical anger 
A lot of people get mad and they say, well, Jesus got angry. Well, Jesus had a, a, a huge right to be angry. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in just a second. I want to go back to Matthew. Okay, what are the constants? We, the constants we see in all four Gospels are is Jesus. Uh, what else? Disciples, the temple. The, the, the temple for sure. Like we know he's in the temple. Okay? Uh, the disciples are in two. Um, How about the, the animals? The doves. The doves, right? We see animals. Um, is the reason the cattle were in that last one? Is that because they use that cat of nine tails. Does it pop? Oh, it'll maybe hurt. It? Yeah. So maybe they would have had to drive the cattle. It could be. Uh, but it says that Jesus... Yeah, yeah. well, he got a hold of one. Right, right. Um, the dates, except for this one, are similar. Um, and, and, and basically, the thread that runs through all of it is his anger. Why is he angry? We'll talk a little bit more about that. I want to talk a little bit right now about the temple, the significance of the Jewish temple. Um, does anyone know the five uh, pillars, and, and I don't expect you to know this, I'm just asking. Uh, does anyone know the five pillars of Islam? No, I'm not teaching Islam. Prayer five times a day is one. Prayer, right? Alms, giving. Facing. Yes, facing Mecca to pray. That's not. It's not a pillar. That's not a pillar. <clears throat> yes. The Hajj or the Hajj? What is it? Hajj. Hajj. H A J J. To go to Mecca at least once. One of the pillars of Islam is that you have to go, don't write this down, please, um, is that you have to make a journey to Mecca. Okay? Well, that's basically what every Jewish male was supposed to do, um, was journey to Jerusalem. And that was the pilgrimage. And, and not only do you do it, it's actually customary to do it every year. Um, Jesus is family actually made the pilgrimage to Jerusalem every year. Um, they went from Nazareth to Jerusalem. Oh my gosh, I can't remember how long it was. I want to say it was 90 kilometers. So you can imagine this journey every year to Jerusalem for the, for the Passover meal. Um, and then go back to Nazareth after the celebration was over. So this was a journey. Um, not, and I'm going to hand you, just hold on to this right now. Would you help me, Robin, please? I think I had 25, so if there's more than 25, you don't mind sharing. cleansing of the old uh, as Jesus comes to become the Messiah. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, so, uh, if name a state, just name a state. Ohio. Ohio! Yay! 
Go back to you. All right, I'll, I'll play along. Okay, say you live in uh, Cincinnati. Columbus. 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 All right, Columbus, where Ohio State is. And, yeah, I'm done. Um, and you wanted to go to church. Um, what would you do? Google. Let's say you move, let's say you just, you're, you're visiting in Columbus, Ohio. You're there for the Ohio State Michigan game. And you want to go to church, what do you do? Open the yellow page. Ask somebody, yellow page. How many do you have to choose from? Lots. Lots. Um, does it matter, do you believe that God dwells in one church more than the other? No. No, right? Well, imagine if there was only one church in the state of Ohio. And you had to go there because that was considered where the place to worship was. This is kind of like how it is in the temple here in Jerusalem. That Solomon builds this temple a thousand years before. It is the, the, the place where everyone goes. The place where God dwells. Now, later on in Acts, we see that Paul you know, kind of uh, distances himself from this uh, theological thinking because he's, he tells the Jews, you know, this God that you worship is not, not in these four walls. It's, you know, this God that you worship is all around doesn't necessarily have to be within uh, the, these, this temple. But, but so this is where they believe the Holy of Holy is, that you know, God dwells within these walls and these walls only. Um, built 1,000 years ago, it was destroyed by the Babylons in 580 B.C. Babylon uh, sacked the city, uh, destroyed the uh, walls of Jerusalem, and uh, destroyed the temple. And 500, 540 BCE, it was uh, built again. I can't remember who built it. Zerubbabel. Thank you. I know it started with other names. Um, it took 23 years to build. Um, so around 520 ish, it was rebuilt. Um, there was a 40, was it 47 it says in the scripture? 46. 46, excuse me. Um, rebuild going on by Herod the Great at the time. So there was a, or a remodel, I should say, a rebuild. A remodel um, going on at the time. So this temple had seen a lot. Uh, it also was the place for um, sacrifice. Uh, what is the root of of sacrifice. I think we get it wrong sometimes. Cleansing of sins. Cleansing. Abraham. Worship. Abraham. Worship. 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 Now, now I'm looking for Offer. blood. No, 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 no. Well, that too. Um, I'm looking for the root of sacrifice. So it has to have some sort of sacred meaning. Sweet. Sacred, sacred meaning. Sacred meaning. That's what I was trying to say. Um, sacred meaning. So sacrifice is this sacred, and actually what this sacrifice meant in the temple was a sacred meal with God. Sacred meal. So of course, the better product you have for God to sacrifice, the more what? The holier, more blessed, the more... Uh, God would think of you the if you, you the, exactly the more you felt you pleased God. So of course you're not going to sacrifice, or you don't want to sacrifice anything that might have a blemish on it, right? Anything that might be imperfect, because that would not please the will of God. Um, so, sorry, my carabiner's falling on. So, so here we have um, people who want to, and, and so you can imagine in these temple courts, and we have the map right here if you want to look at it. Imagine, imagine a town, okay? And then imagine our north. Imagine it's the town of Anna Maria, and imagine the narthex, and imagine the congregation 
And then the stage area and the choir area. Well, the North X would be like the place where only women could go. What if we said at our church that women can only go to this place right here and they can't go any further, can't go into church, okay? Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah, my wife slapped me. Revolution. <laughs> okay, that's what is going on here. And then you had, well, first of all, you had to be Jewish to get actually in the gate, okay? To get inside the temple, you had to be Jewish. And then women could just kind of hang out in the North Oaks, okay? And the men could sacrifice stuff on the altar. Of course, the better, uh, the more perfect the animal is, the better it is. Um, and then you have the place that only the Holy of Holies can go. And that is in the back, but again, the religious leaders can only go there once a year, and they have a place where they can sit as well. So imagine the congregation can't come up on stage. So the women can't even get into the congregation, and the men can't even get up on stage. And that's basically what you have. And if you're not a Christian, you can't even get inside the church doors. That's basically what we have. Alright? So, the beautiful gate is where the men can enter in. Does anyone remember the gates called beautiful? Um, does anyone remember that reference in Acts 3? Where Peter and John go to pray and they see this quadriplegic temple, temple gates called beautiful. And he said, silver and gold I have none, but in what I have I give you in the name of Jesus walk. And so he takes him by the hand and the man is healed. Um, so this would be the city of Anna Maria right here. And then this would be Rosa, if you can imagine that. Except we don't let women in. Um, and then once a year, a person can go to the choir area. And that's basically it. Now, Jesus is incensed because of the way that the same old establishment is treating worship. Because it was a hoodoo. Jesus says, oh, excuse me, the people in there are exchanging Jewish money or, or the local currency for Roman currency so you can you know, use that money. The problem is they were exchanges at, at a ridiculous, you know, rate. You know, pretend that $100, um, what's, what's the currency in, um, yeah, right. I thought that they were exchanging, because they have a rule against graven images, they were exchanging Roman money for coins that had been blank, and they were doing that at a rate of interest that was outrageous. You're talking about the interest rate itself or exchange? The interest the rate is, out, is outrageous to begin with. And the currency. Because that's the robbery. Right. But the currency is being exchanged because Romans had uh, the Roman coins had images on them, and they were forbidden to have images. Yeah. And, so. and, and there's also another thing going on. And the other thing going on is there's other people, there are people inside the temple that are trying to sell uh, unblemished animals at an outrageous rate. An outrageous rate. And to say, Charlotte... I noticed that your lamb has a blemish on it. But I tell you what, got a good lamb over here. You give me five hundred dollars, and I'll make sure that lamb has. A, you know, y'all give you an unblemished. So they were trusting the leaders of the temple. And Plus, they right. gave up their lamb. They had to give up their. Yeah, lamb. they had to. You know exactly. They had to give up their lamb, and so it is a racket. Okay, and so so is that true worship? And what's the answer to that? The answer is no, no, no. They are made. They are profiting off of what they're doing, and they're not doing it in the name of God. They're doing it in the name of their own sake. Just kind of like what you know. Why did we leave the Catholic Church? Because the Catholic Church was profiting off of people. Indulgences. Indulgences, yes. Leo, 
Leo was uh, asking for indulgences. I, you know, I don't know if uh, Uncle Ray is in heaven, but uh, you give me enough money, I'll make sure I'll pray him in there. And that's how it started. And Martin Luther wrote, wrote this whole rebuttal. I was like, no, that's not how it is. And that's what Jesus is saying here. You took the most sacred thing and you turned it into your own prophet. Now, right, Jesus gets so mad at this because we often overlook the third commandment. And what's the third commandment? Remember the Sabbath day. You shall no graven image. Oh. It's on the wall back there. Back on the wall. <laughs> shall not take the Lord's name in vain. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. And sometimes we get this wrong. Well, a lot of times we get this wrong. Is that if you break it down in the Jewish language, it's not saying GD necessarily. Okay? Even though you don't ever say that. I'm not saying do it. But we, we often mistake for what the third commandment is all about. Third commandment is all about taking God's name and doing evil in His name. Taking God's name. Carol, do you have a question? No. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were Taking God's name and doing evil in His name. That is a commandment breaker. I mean, I think, every time I think about that, I think about the, the Catholics, and not, not to say the whole Catholic Church is guilty, but the Catholic priest scandal that's going on right now, and how they tried to hide a lot of it, and they were basically taking God's name and doing evil because of it. And I think a lot of the prosperity preachers, you know, what would God say about that? That, you know, you need to, you need to give me money because I need a jet plane. For, you know, all these people that have embezzled money in the church, pastors that have stolen money in the church, doing evil in God's name. I mean, how, how is God going to respond to that? So you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful about how you handle yourself as a preacher. Um, have to be careful about how you handle yourself as a Christian, as a believer, uh, because because it's very easy to do evil in the name of God, and that is the commandment. You are taking God's name in vain. Your your interests you're putting above God's, and that's exactly what they did. They took their own interests, and in the name of God, they were exploiting people, and Jesus couldn't stand it. And this whole thing of coming, of him coming in, is a, is telling people, no, we're not going to do it like that anymore. Why? Okay, I'm not. This is an objective thing. What I'm about to say, I hate to use political terms, but I think this is important <coughs> to the discussion. Why did Donald Trump, how did Donald Trump get elected? And don't say, wait, 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 this is objective, okay, not subjective. Don't say because 65 million people are dumb, okay? Don't say that. Don't say because 65 million people are racist. Don't say that. How did Donald Trump, or why did Donald Trump get elected? How did Donald Trump get elected? More electoral votes. No, no, no. Not, not the science of it. Oh. Trade down the resentment of the leaders. Yes. Yes, exactly. The resentment of the leaders. It was, it was a core group. And, 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 and another person said this. I'm just quoting it. But it was a, an establishment. Not an establishment, but a core group who saw Washington, who saw the government, who saw the leaders. And whether you like or not, that's not what I'm trying to get. I don't, I don't care about that. I'm just saying objectively. Is that a group of Americans said to the leaders, I saw you. I caught you. You've been lying to us. You've been exploiting us. 
And we're not going to have it anymore. And your penance is this orange billionaire over here. <laughs> That's your punishment. And the same thing with what's going on here, because Dan brought it up a little while ago, is that these people were doing what? They weren't doing God's work. They weren't doing God's work. And in two Gospels, Jesus says what? They're a den of thieves. You're a den of thieves, but the, especially he, he talks about the people who are, who are making what offerings? A dove is a sign of what? Peace. Peace. You guys are making peace offerings in your life. I caught you. I think the doves are also mentioned because many of these people were poor enough they couldn't afford to bring yeah, the sheep and the dove or the lamb. Was one of the poor so years. the doves were cheaper, and therefore more people were being, you know, uh, gypped by the dove uh, dealers simply on a case of numbers. Yeah. But the whole thing is a profanity in what they not only did, but it's a profanity in their minds as to what they held toward God. Yeah. The ultimate profanity was inside their head that they thought they could do that and get away with it. Right. Right, and, that, that's and, that's what Je and that's what Jesus is saying, and that's why I brought up the Trump analogy. Objectively, okay, it's not political, but it was. You have to admit that was a a, a group saying, "We caught you. We're doing it a new way, and this is your penance." Jesus is saying the same thing: "I caught you, and we're going to do something different, and you're not going to do this anymore." Any questions? This is what's going on Sunday and Monday. Next week, well, in three years prior. Um, but I think there, I'm telling you why, I'll hold on just a second. Sure. I, uh, I'll tell you why I think it's two different um, times of cleansing the temple. I think this is to signify his ministry, to begin his ministry. And then I believe the other three are to say this is a new covenant I'm making with people we are not about the old way. It's a cleansing of worship. All right? I caught you. Uh, yes, Fred. And now I'll get to the, uh, the three-year thing, I think, also points to the fact that there's enough money at play here that I'm sure that the day after Easter Sunday, they were back in the temple doing it again. Oh, yeah, sure. So. Sure. Um, so it could have same. happened more than once. And, you know, in three years, they were back there in full force again. Same reason why we have preachers um, that run around with women in their church. They get fired and then they just go to another church um, that, and they run around with women there uh, because they never, uh, they never understand what it's like to serve there after their own exploitation. And you have to be, you know, what, what does Jesus say? Beware of, of uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. Yes, ma'am. I was just going to say, it doesn't seem like it's limited three or four times. It sounds like Jesus did this often, that he went into the temple and he well, disrupted it. And that's why everybody was getting very angry at him. And well, yeah. you, don't kill, you don't want to kill somebody because they just show up one or two times. But if they continuously show up and disrupt your... Yeah. Yeah, and he spent uh, uh, Sue and then Robin and not, let me just piggy piggyback on what you said is Jesus pretty much in here, especially in Matthew, he takes a long time. He takes, and I believe this is during the week of the Passion, if I'm not mistaken, is he takes a long time. Just he spends chapters, okay, talking about the Pharisees, about how wrong they are. And just pounds it and pounds it and pounds it and pounds it. You know, it talks about, yeah, you have phylacteries around your head. And phylacteries are little cubes that have Bible verses on them. And they wear it as a sign of being religious and to memorize these verses. But, you know, you wear them on your outside, but inside you're just wicked. Not, you know, not only this, um, you know, you... Uh, Tie the tie to your spices, but you don't have any mercy in your heart. You should have done the former or not the last. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on with this stuff. Um, so you're right; it doesn't it doesn't end here. Um, it's an ongoing fight. So, so uh, we know Christianity has evolved over the centuries. <coughs> Judaism too, although they keep a lot of the same rites and rituals. But I don't think they do sacrifices anymore. So. When did that? When did they finally? Get I'll, I'll refer you to 
the uh, Jewish lady. What? Sacrifice. They don't do that anymore. No, no she was asking me. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we didn't talk about in John uh, Jesus' response about the temple being rebuilt three days at his body. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, during this time, the, the temple was being renovated. and But Jesus is not saying, okay, if you destroyed this temple, I'm going to rebuild it in, in three days. It was, what's, what's going to go on? Basically, a prop. His body is talking about him being raised in three days. It's basically a prophecy that you destroy this temple, you destroy the temple of my body. It's going to be raised again in three days. Um, of course, the disciples didn't understand that when it happened. And you and what did we talk about last week in the Gospel of John? You see a lot of times that the disciples were. They misunderstood what Jesus was saying. And in, set, and in John, it does say that. The disciples finally later got it when they were <coughs> talking about the temple of his body. His body's a temple, anyway. Um, but that's what he's saying that, you know, um, you can't, you know, because the teachers were, were and this happens in John a lot too, and I don't mean to ramble is that the teachers got really literal, or the people who didn't understand Jesus got really literal. Like in Nicodemus, he said, you know, to uh, enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is like thinking, how can I be, I can't come out of my mother's womb again. Like Nicodemus is really thinking, literally got to be born again. And, and Jesus is saying, no, this is a spiritual birth. And the same thing here is, these, these people who are in charge are going, took us 47 years to build that temple. You can't do it in three days. And that's not the meaning. The meaning is he's got to uh, the temple of his body. His body will be raised in three days. Any other? Yes, sir. You were, you were making a reference on the, the five pillars of Islam. How did that bounce against what we went through? You brought up the five pillars of... Oh, oh I'm sorry. I was just using it as a parallel. I, I just like... Because of the pilgrimage, um, okay. the Muslim, the one of the five pillars is the pilgrimage to Mecca. You have to do it once within your life. And I was talking about, imagine uh, Judaism being a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. That's what was expected. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to make a comparison. No, I'm one of the connectors. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, bad comparison with Islam, bad comparison with Donald Trump. I had to just work with me here, okay? <laughs> yes? I uh, Google when they stop sacrificing. And it says, for all intents and purposes, it was with the destruction of the second temple by the Romans. Yeah, yeah about, say, 60 or 70 AD. Yeah. Uh, was Nero responsible? Correct me if I'm wrong. Was Nero responsible? Tiberius, I think. Tiberius. Nero was crazy. <laughs> Just to let you know. Um, any other questions? Sir? How did you arrive that this happened three years earlier than the other three? I missed that. Sir, well, it has to be. You talk about John? Yeah. Well, it stays, well, first of all, it states that it was his first miracle. Right after turning the water into wine. And if you notice, go back to John 2 again. 13 through 22. 22. Thank you. 13 through 22. It begins the message in the ministry of Jesus. Because he's not done. I mean, Holy Week's not until John, I think it's the 11th or 12th chapter. And not only that, we know he's in ministry for three years. And we know that he goes to three Passover feasts. So this has to be the first Passover. That he, I'm just during his ministry. As an adult. And what we know. Because keep in mind, we, we only have, how many, how many instances do we have of Jesus as a youth? In all four Gospels. When he was 12 and went into the temple. 
And the, so that means lost them or the answer is one. 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 One, right? And all the other ones, we either have them as a child, as maybe a two-year-old when the Magi comes in Matthew, or as an adult as he begins his ministry. And this is right when um, we have the beginning of John and then the first miracle he performs, and then we have uh, the cleansing of the temple in John 2. And then actually, right after that is John 3, which we meet Nicodemus. So this begins his ministry right here. And John, according to John, and again, I believe he cleansed the temple twice. I think it's important that mom and brothers were with him in John right. and not in the other three. In my heart or mind's eye, that kind of gives it a different uh, framing mm -hmm. because he just did his first miracle with his mother, the water to wine, and now he's cleansing a temple. The timeline seems to be more... Yeah, he's still right. He's still with, if we notice in Cana, he's with his mom. Right. Because then he yells at his mom about my hours not coming. Now, I've tried the Christ like approach growing up. Um, it doesn't work. Um, woman! Anyway. Um, but, yes, his mother is still with him. His disciples are with him in Cana. And then we get to, to uh, the temple here in John 2. Yes, the brothers are with him. His disciples are with him. And his mom. But it's almost a belief thing instead of a concrete black and white thing. Right. Right? Right. Remember what uh, some scholars call it textual criticism that um, you know sometimes like we do all four parallels and they don't all add up or some have different me meanings or whatever. We also have to remember what faith is. And the, what's the biblical definition of faith? Believing what you haven't seen. Yeah, believe in things, the belief in things unseen, the promise of things hoped for. Right? That's, that's Hebrews' definition of faith. That we believe, though we don't see the whole picture in all four Gospels, we believe that it happened. We believe that he did, he went through the temple. That he did all these things. Whether it was a Sunday or a Monday or whatever. We believe he did those things. Any questions? I guess just the parallel that basically they were running a commercial enterprise there rather than a, a religious temple for yeah, God. And and, and I'm really reluctant. I've had people that come and like sing in our church. And I'm not, not, not here so much, but they come and it's when I was in charge. Because um, when you're associate, it's not your problem. Um, <laughs> somebody else get in trouble, I don't care. Uh, but when I've been a pastor, I, I'm just really careful of Someone comes and sings in my church and they want to sell merchandise afterwards. Mm. It just feels a little. Ouch. Wow. Sell your CDs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I don't know how to feel about that. And maybe that's because I'm so worried about this story. That I, maybe they're not doing it for their own accord and they're, they're really just trying to make a living. I mean, there's a difference between profiting off the poor. And making a living, um, but I'm just really um, maybe they're word. just trying to. It's a gray area. Uncomfortable. Yes, yeah. a gray area that you don't. Want it's to a gray know. right. It's a gray area. Um, yeah, it's like throwing the football in the sanctuary. You know, when you have a youth director and you're like, <laughs> you know, it yes. It evokes a thought process that you don't keep your finger on. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. It evokes a thought process. Yes. You can't put your right. 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 And you, you wanna you wanna err on the side of good judgment. But then again you, you see the story and it's like, 
What would Jesus say if he was, you know, in this situation right now? I mean, that's tough. That's well, tough. a lot of it was the intent. Yes, intent. This was <laughs> Did y'all learn something today? Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> who said the intent? Wait, who said the intent? Say that again. It said it, it really was the intent. It was the intent. It was the intent. And they were trying to make a profit. They were trying to exploit. They were trying to make an illegal profit. It was exactly. a racket. Yeah, it was a racket. Was and they racket. killed him for the money. Yeah. And it was almost like you had to, to do it or you wouldn't be accepted at all. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. Peggy, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Peggy. Okay, I have to let you the to Jones and Jesus and, and the, the the Jewish the Jewish people that were in um, power were having this ongoing argument about what they can do. Did, did any of the Jewish priests, it, it says the disciples didn't understand when he said, I can build my temple in three days. Did any of the Jewish priests understand what he was saying when he said, I can, re, I can rebuild my temple in, in three days? Because coming from New Jersey and being from the future, that's a pretty scary thing to say because they're arguing and they're saying they want to kill them. And he's saying, if you kill me, I'll be back in three days. Yeah. Yeah. Does it, did they ever address that question? can't remember, and I'm sorry. Because Bob's here, because Bob's here, and I just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think, Neil, may I say one more thing? We should go back to his point, because they were holding those people up with their own salvation, mm -hmm. with their fear of, with their fear of uh, lack of eternal life. That's what they held in front of them, to take their money. Yeah. And that is really, really Oh, that, that reminds, oh, I knew, thank you for saying that, because I knew there was an analogy to what I said with the, again, not to be political, but the Trump analogy. Remember the Trump analogy? Is the people going, oh, we caught you, leaders. We caught you, and this is your, this is your penance. The orange billionaire you're going to get for four years, right? Okay, that's exactly what happened, is that now this guy's in charge who has no business being there because he had no political experience, and what does the other side want to do? They want to get them out. <clears throat> what happened here? Same it thing. It was a political struggle, sure. right? Not only was it a spiritual struggle, it was a political struggle. <coughs> is that these people, he, <coughs> he was messing it up. He was messing it up, and this guy had to go. And what did they do? And we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. There was one, there was one priest for sure who did you know who it was? Oh. <laughs> don't say, wait, don't, don't. There was one what? There was one priest who believed. Don't say it. Are you sure? He gave Jesus his tomb. Oh, Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph of Arimathea yeah. was one of the priests. Yeah. But, in, I didn't know in he was one a priest. sense, they all believed because that's what made them so mad. He's claiming to be God. Only God can do this. And that's what made them so mad. I mean, that... In their sin, in their belief, he was absolutely guilty of what they charged him with. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. And because he claimed to be God. And, that was, and so they didn't have any problem at all believing that they were right. But it was a power struggle. Oh, absolutely. Politics. Absolutely. And the money. It comes what, down to the money. Whatever he said. Perfect. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anything else? It's interesting that in the first first one there, the Pharisees do not speak of killing Jesus. I'm sorry, say that again. The Pharisees do not speak of killing Jesus mm -hmm. in John's. That's right. It's the other three. Yep. And the first one, they haven't learned. So that's what's happened to you. Keep in mind this is three years earlier. Right. So yeah. they're yeah. mad. Yeah. But they're not going to They're not that. here yet. Right. They are, they are he doesn't have the crowd yet. He doesn't, he doesn't have the, have the crowd yet either, right? Right. Anything up next week? We're going to talk about the fig tree and a couple other things. Uh, Jesus uh, sees a fig tree that doesn't produce anyway because it's not in season, and he still curses that. He cursed the fig tree. All right? Let's pray. Lord, as we worship.
help us to keep in mind that our worship should be about you, not political struggle, not our struggle, but Lord, to come in and truly make your place a house of worship. Lord, help us to do that every time we come into this place. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of worship as we did last Sunday, and we thank you, Lord, to continue in our studies this week. Father, continue to watch over us. Lord, keep us safe as we go home. And Lord, to be with those, Lord, that have lost loved ones this week. Lord, our church is hurting right now. Father, we pray that even though we walk through the valley, you are with us. Your rod and your staff protect us and comfort us. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Now go with us. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.